please come back. <laughs> okay. This, okay. Hello, allemaal. I think this looks a little bit better. Um, do let, let us know if you uh, can hear and see us fine. That would be great. Uh, we'll give a couple of seconds while I start lining up things. So uh, every every week is very exciting because every week we have to improvise and try something new. Yes, especially the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, guys, but uh, we are on my telephone now, and I'm sitting yes, in Arjen's uh, Arjen's room. Perfect. Okay. So um, yeah, last week uh, I gave a presentation about buoyancy and. Um, all the theory around it and uh, i was very happy personally i was very happy with the comments and people liked it and uh, in general and uh, yeah some of you found it useful tips solama pagi solama pagi <laughs> axel hi 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 fun and um, so we thought um, to make it a little to extend it a little bit yeah. and make it more practical so we're going to do a lot more diving theory and how we're going to show that into practice. Well, not more diving theory, but um, just a short repetition of what we did um, last week and then showing the video. And to be very honest, I personally had a lot of fun doing this. And um, Arjen was the, uh, the guy behind the camera and he had a lot of fun too. So I hope that, um, yeah that you like it as well, Yes. just send us your comments. Yes, uh, but first, uh, before we start, uh, the usual housekeeping, everyone, please do share uh, the stream. And uh, once again, I want to thank everyone who donated uh, for their very kind and generous donations. Uh, it really helps us. And there's some good news uh, I read about the EU. Yes, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, Apparently, if everything goes right, it seems that uh, by uh, the end of July, around 70% of uh, all of the EU's in uh, inhabitants will be vaccinated. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's great news. And uh, you should also know that uh, by now, at least 50 of our staff have been vaccinated yeah. as well. Yes, and we are on the list for Wednesday. Yeah. So that me and we means uh, Satoka, Aryan and me. So, uh, yeah, we had to have a difficult number or something and it took a while, but uh, we will get our first vaccine in on Wednesday. Yeah. And on the 4th of May, the first flight out of Singapore to Bali is going to take place. Mm. So that is good news too. And um, so, yeah, we are, we have to get ready to, uh, to receive you. Yes, <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, no, me too. And uh, we really? are Pepe and Cookie, according to them. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, snip and snap. Snip and snap. Uh, is it um... uh, Batman and Robin? Who's Robin? Who cares? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, that is great news, Katrin. And uh, oh, Stephen, great news as well. You've had your second vaccine. Perfect. Uh, well You're done. You're safe. Well done. Good. Good job, everyone. And uh, yeah, everyone who said good morning, good morning to you all. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's dive into uh, the video, shall we? Yep. So I'll keep the volume low. So, to, Simone, um, I'll uh, give you the chance to uh, narrate while we're playing the video. So here we okay. go. Yep. Okay. As I told you uh, before last week, the, the, the key of, uh, of correct buoyancy is starting with the buoyancy check. So regulate in your mouth deflate your PCD completely and then you should sink slowly if you have to complete uh, the correct amount of weight. Oh, I'm not going down. Yeah, that is because I don't keep my fin still, guys. So <laughs> this is a involuntary reaction. People do that, especially if they think they want to go down, but they're not 100% ready yet. So then you're moving your fins and uh, it happens often, very often with students. So for the instructors amongst us, uh, Graham and uh, who was there, um, Hup, mm -hmm. he's also an instructor. Yep. So you guys uh, pay attention. Huh? Yeah. Here's the course director talking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had great fun making this. Yes. Uh, there was, uh, we spent like two separate dives filming all this in the, at the house reef. And yeah, just the two of us. 
yeah good, good fun really nice yeah all right uh, next one okay and then uh once you have your um your buoyancy correct then um it's time to make the descent and last week i told you about the bump first descent i can tell you that was not easy to demonstrate uh I, it takes but effort it takes effort to do that uh but this is a, a bump first or a back first descent it's completely out of control it's very uncomfortable for the person that uh, that is doing it or experiencing it and um yeah, it's it's just not not a way to do it. I think everybody will agree to that. Yeah. So I thought, well, I told you that there are two way, two things that we can do about it. Uh, the first one is make a correction, and the second one is make a different kind of descent. So first, we will show you the correction on the bump first descent. I like that bum first. Yeah, <laughs> uh, although my bum is not that big, but <laughs> no, but it's, it was first. It it, it came first, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, so as you see, I like I told you and explained last week, you turn on your length axle, and that brings your feet up, and you have control again over the uh, over the descent. And, and for me, if I'm in an awkward position, what helps for me is to just kind of turn my head to look where I want to go. Yep. That immediately, because then the rest of your body will follow as well. Yep. In most cases. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's how you correct a, a bum first uh, descent. Hello, Will. Goedemorgen. Goedemorgen. And uh, Hoop says visibility doesn't always allow you to see the feet. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> but you can be suspicious if they're not going down. Yes. <laughs> so let's look at... Um... And then uh, to avoid a bump first uh, descent, it's kind of a giant stride descent. Yeah, One leg in the front and one leg in the back. Looks very graceful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, like I said last week, it has a huge advantage because if you have too much weight and you would go too fast, the only thing you have to do is kick your fins together and you hang still. You break if you want. And uh, you can start your dive. And then from there, you just uh, simply turn over. Yeah, you turn over and start to swim. Yep. 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 OK, so next up, we have uh, trim and weight distribution. Before yeah. I start the next one, you want to yeah. tell a little bit? Um, OK, so now we're down. But a, a good position underwater is also something that, uh, that will help you to conserve air and energy. And um, to achieve a good position underwater, your weight has to be distributed properly. Uh, we call it a trim. In Dutch, it's uittrimmen, maar dat wordt ook, that is being used also by arranging your buoyancy. But officially, the word trim means that you change your weight around your body a little bit so you can hang um, properly. <laughs> right. So the first thing. Right. So the first one is um, trying to hover with too much weight at the backside. So what happens then? Well, obviously, you fall backwards. Much like the bump first descent, but now in a stationary position. Very difficult to stay upright. A lot of hand waving. Yes. Every time you have the tendency to um, to move your hands, it usually means that there is something wrong with your buoyancy. So uh, you don't always think about that, but 
it is a way of compensating for um, the wrong the, the, the wrong weight and the wrong side. And that's why. <laughs> and that is why I had to cheat a little bit. So I have a two kilo weight at the back of my tank. <laughs> Almost very uncomfortable, guys. <laughs> I can imagine. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, uh, Stephen. That's a very nice uh, compliment. Um, he says, my three musketeers goatee fits me well. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> okay. Hey, you're, hey, John. Hey, John. Hey. And then, uh, yeah, the same, of course, if you have too much weight on one side, it's also pretty much impossible to stay in the correct position. And you fall to the side. Which is also not comfortable. And you have the tendency to wave your hands all the time. Very awkward. Very awkward. Hey, do you guys see my new fins, by the way? Mm -hmm. Monster fins. How much uh, kilo do you usually use? And this is the culprit. Well, uh, to my shame, I have to say that um, while getting older, I'm using more weights. Okay. I used when I was young, younger, <laughs> a lot younger. <laughs> I was using three kilos and gradually over the years, I started to have to use more weights. Okay. And, um, I'm now perfectly oh, trimmed oh. with six weights. Six, six, six kilos? kilos. Okay. Yeah. All right. So next up. Incorrect finning techniques. Yeah. So it has not everything to do with uh, the buoyancy, but um, we talked also a little bit about um, using your fins correctly. Unfortunately, we see this kind of guests quite often. Can you imagine if you have this person as a buddy and then diving in Lembe? Mm. It's, you don't really want that, to be honest. So even if they apologize, no. That's not what you want to do. <laughs> that is definitely not what you want no. to do. It kicks up uh, way too much dust, dust and it spoils uh, the view for everyone else, especially for the uh, photographers. Uh, yeah, that's not nice. So yeah, I, I decided to call it the sand blaster. Yeah, which yeah. you could do with your monster fins. With my monster fins. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Graham. Um, Graham says, "I'm sure your weights have gone up because you are using warmer and more buoyant wetsuits." Oh, Graham, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It has nothing to do with an increase. Um, um, amount of uh, fat tissue and uh, no. lighter bone structures. It, it no, doesn't. it has nothing no. to do with that. Okay. And uh, Stephen says the same happens to me. More weights, six kilograms as well, 60 to 30 years ago. I needed less. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I guess, a fact of life. Yeah, nothing we can do about no. it. All right, let's uh, take okay. a look at the next incorrect finning technique. Yeah, some people uh, confuse diving with another kind of sport. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like I said before, the, the way your fins are built is to move water backwards. And a lot of people, especially the ones that have been, um, they, they think they were smart buying huge fins uh, with booties and don't know how to use them they have this kind of fin technique underwater. And very often, like I do here, is because they don't they don't go forwards, they yeah. also use their, their arms. Yeah. So yeah. it's... Um, very tiring, I would imagine. <laughs> okay, Graham, no, don't. <laughs> 12 kilos? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used to dive with a dry suit too. Mm. How many kilos did you wear for that? 12 and 12? in winter 14 because mm. I had two undergarments on. Yeah, 
yeah. 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 You're right, Brian. The bicycle kick. Yeah. Yep. Very true. You're not going and, anywhere. Uh, and and what do you think of the next one? This is this is one of my students is doing this. This is perfectly awkward, and I I really had to think about how to copy this. But this is the downward kick. Um, from the yoga world, uh, we call this one the downward frog. Oh, the downward frog. Yeah, yeah. Like not the, the down downward dog. Yes, right? this yeah. is the downward frog. Downward okay. Frog. So the legs are sticking up, and. Only your lower legs are moving, bringing, pushing your upper body in the sand. I have to push up all the time. I try to get my buoyancy straight by inflating my BCD to stay off the bottom. And once I am there, I try to get up straight. But what happens next is that I have far too much air in my BCD and I start to make a very rapid ascent. Yeah, you flew by. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, everyone, don't worry. This was in a very controlled, very undeep <laughs> water <laughs> with a very experienced course director. <laughs> so, and this is nice filming with you because, you know, I can just let you do your thing. Yeah. Right? If I had anyone who was less experienced, you were worried. I would be worried. Yeah. I well, would be very worried. I had a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> Actually, some of the mistakes are, are really difficult. So mm -mm. difficult to do, right. actually. Oh, wait. Wim says 30, 60 years ago, he didn't use any weights for his longest dive ever. Nine months. You made a dive of nine months? Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yep. I think I think he means his current COVID dive. No, no, no. Nice. He's still in the womb oh. 60 years ago. <laughs> Good one. Good one, Bim. Good one. He didn't get it. I didn't get it. <laughs> but that's a good one. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, me too, actually. Yeah. Uh, all of us, I all think. All of us <laughs> didn't use any weights uh, in the womb. Okay. Uh, so, let's have a look uh, on how to do it. Properly, yes. Right. We start yeah. with the normal flutter kick. The flutter kick. Correct feeling techniques. Right. So the correct feeling technique is moving your legs from the hips with legs as straight as you can keep them without uh, locking them. So yeah, once we were done with the mistakes, we could get on the reef yeah. and uh, have a look around a little bit. And do some proper diving. And do some proper diving. <laughs> keep keep up those comments guys looks great <laughs> i had him yeah this looks very relaxed very controlled very nice thank you i cannot say that for myself but i'm happy you say that thank you yeah yeah okay just strolling over the reef this is uh it doesn't cost you any air and or hardly any air and uh, yeah it's just relaxing and nice to do yeah i never get bored that's why you're still here yeah yeah it's true hey nice camera work hey guys <laughs> oh, thanks <laughs> okay yeah, and then there are some variations as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, so here's a frog kick. And uh, the frog kick, I uh, I put in, especially for you, Graham, because uh, you made a comment on that uh, last time. And the frog kick you use when you are close to the sand and you don't want to steer up the bottom. Uh, you could also use it if you swim through narrow passages or um, shallow passages like in uh, in a wreck for instance mm. yeah it's like um, the schoolslag but on a very very short uh, what is that swimming stroke called what? the common swimming stroke oh breast stroke breast stroke yeah breast stroke <laughs> oh i'm gonna pause after this clip uh, for some comments <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Graham. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, As somebody has to say it. Yeah, because we don't have you guys to say it for us. Uh -uh. Right. So, all right. Let me pause it quickly. And uh, Graham says this is turning into the Arjen and Simone Mutual Admiration Society. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I do agree. Uh, Mario Line says good morning. Uh, sh yeah, she says she sees very often the very terrible uh, finning techniques underwater. And you wonder how people learn it that way. I, I think they don't. Nobody I think there they don't. to correct them. Um, there's there's nobody there's unfortunately I know quite a number of instructors that think that teaching people the correct fin technique is not necessary. Mm. That you just put on a pair of fins and everybody can do it. But in fact, that is not true. It's one of the the most important skills to learn. Fundamental. It's absolutely fundamental, and it every, everything all the power comes from a good uh, fin stroke. Mm -hmm. So it is it is fundamental that every instructor teaches, takes the time, and sometimes it's really really annoying and 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 time consuming and you're losing your patient because they don't listen to you you think they don't listen they do listen but they don't know how to do it it's something you have to feel and um when i'm training the kids in the school because every year i have uh, a whole bunch of them learning how to use their fins um one of the things that we teach them is uh, to use the correct muscles and the correct muscles is, like I told you uh, last week, is your upper thighs, your bum, and your back uh, to move your fins properly. And, and this is something that a lot of people, they don't do or they don't have the muscle, um, muscle discipline yet to, to actually practice a correct fin stroke. Yeah. Mm -mm. I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for a good technique. I love it. Fundamentals teaches everything. Adam says, I recognize a lot that I still do wrong with my first dive. So the first dive, every first dive he does. Mm. Um, so yeah, okay. hopefully you'll learn a little bit. Um, and then <laughs> Graham says, uh, he's not sure, but he found other people get quite offended when you try to teach them better technique. Um, I have been swimming for years. Um, for, yeah. For, 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 for. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see that actually. Um, I yeah, and uh, and you make progress. Um, I can show you something else that you might try, and mm. and and maybe you feel an addition to your already broad experience. Right, right. right? Graham, let us know if you would have handled that the same <laughs> way as uh, she she just did. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, go back to another clip. Uh, let's see. Dolphin kick. Oh yeah, the dolphin kick. Um, you will not use that very often, actually. It's um, it it can be a very fast uh, discipline. It's uh, it's often used at uh, free diving with uh, with fins even longer than mine, and or a monofin. And um, yeah, it's um, it's just another way of uh, of going fast. Actually, this is it's not so relaxed, but uh, you can go very fast with this uh, with this fin stroke. And we had to film this twice, yeah, because the first time you were too late of catching me. Uh, I my artistic eye didn't frame you properly, so uh -uh. Uh, let's just leave it with camera technique. Okay. Um, you know, we want to give you guys the, the most. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, wait, let's go back. Um, so, first of all, Stephen says when you have lower back problems, the strength can come from the knees. Um, I don't think so, Stephen, because um, the the main muscles that you're using is the one in your bum and the one in your upper thigh. And um, if you use those, then your lower back can, the lower back is only to keep your back uh, rounded. If you, if you have lower back problems, then don't do that, but you can still use your leg. It's, it's like walking. You can also walk with the straight legs and uh, without, without lifting your knees all the time. If you can walk, you can swim. Right. Yeah. 
And I agree, Graham, I, I will not start telling you what I wanted to do with students. Quite a lot. To actually. everyone watching, don't do this. <laughs> but of course, Graham is kidding. Um, good man. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Catherine, I once had a, um, a big fight with uh, a German diver. And we were diving in the south of Holland, in Zeeland. And uh, I was teaching an advanced course, and we did search and recovery. And my students had to find a big flywheel, very heavy flywheel. And I hit that uh, somewhere mm. uh, in the area. And I put a label on it. This wheel belongs to Talasa Dive Center. And um, under the wheel was my lifting device. And my students had to look for it and, uh, mm. and bring it up. And then I was hovering in the area. And then this, um, this diver passed along, saw my flywheel, reached the slate, and starts to inflate the 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 lifting device and i was like what the hell <laughs> keep your hands to yourself it's not yours <laughs> so i went to him i said no don't do that this is mine and he said go away yeah don't do that to me you know what is my response if that happens this <laughs> regulator of mask off and he was gone very easy. OK, <laughs> OK. Um, uh, I think Axel is also agreeing turning air off. Don't do that. Don't, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do no, that. No, no, no. Hey, and we have quite a few instructors here. Yes, of, of course. Um, but I don't want to uh, promote the wrong messaging here, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> no, um, only one German, Graham. It was only one German. <laughs> and he was not a ni nice guy. Not, not like Catherine and Jürgen. It was just just the, the, the one German that was not nice. OK, just uh -huh. the one. Just the one, right. yeah. OK. Um, another technique, uh, which is known as sculling. I had never heard of this word before. And I'm sure most instructors here will know what this is. But this looks very interesting. So let's take a look. OK. Um, sculling is actually a technique that comes from, um, uh, how do you call that, uh, Kunstzwemmer, figure swimming? Or uh, synchronized swimming, synchronized, synchronized swimming. swimming. And um, in my youth, I've done that for a while, and I can still have the benefits of it. And um, what you actually do is you don't move your fins at all. So if you are on a very sensitive bottom or you are really you are inside a wreck and you don't want to steer up anything to make sure that you keep the visibility that is there, mm. then uh, sculling is, um, is, is the option, and sculling means you make the figure eight with your hands, and it really helps. It's, it's not very useful for photographers, uh, sorry to say, because mm -hmm. um, yeah, you cannot scull with the camera in your hand, but for anybody else... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> Absolutely. Have you tried that, Stephen? I'm curious to know if, uh, if you've tried sculling with a camera. If I so, know. please do explain the technique. <laughs> yep. Next time you dive with me, I will show you. <laughs> oh, can I film? Yes. Great. I would love to uh, film that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. Scroll. And of course you can scull forwards but you can also scroll backwards if you scroll backwards then you have to put your you make a eight in uh, in also an eight but in reverse right. and just pushing the water away from yes it. yeah breath control and right. then yeah i put a lot of time explaining about breath control uh, last week because um experienced divers like the guides everybody we hardly ever touch the um, the inflator or the deflator everything goes with breath control but by the way it's um uh, it's actually um one of the reasons i don't like um, um how do you say that rebreathers because with rebreathers you cannot use breath control no. right 
And, and also because uh, we had the pleasure of uh, having two uh, expat guests here who yeah. did an open water course. Yes. They were absolutely beginning. And uh, that was kind of half the inspiration of doing this breath control yeah. series as well, right? Yeah. Because we were talking about um, talking to them about how you can control your breathing and they were learning the ropes. They were kind yeah. of getting the hang of it. And yes. so that kind of inspired uh, doing uh, these clips. So. Um, next time I dive with you, Stephen says, it would be pure bliss. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at a couple of uh, breath control techniques. Okay, so, yeah, like I explained last week, um, of course you know that you will never ever hold your breath, but you can change the frequency in which you breathe. If you breathe out long, and inhale fast, breathe out long, and inhale fast, and breathe out long, and inhale fast, and breathe out long, and then the opposite. Breathe in slowly, breathe out fast, slowly and fast, mm -hmm. slowly and fast, and you're going up. Yeah. And uh, for the people that pay a lot of attention, um, on the background, you see uh, our Talasa 9 shipwreck. Mm -mm. The one we, uh, we brought down last year. Yes. The one I saw absolutely... Uh, Let's forget that, but watch no. that episode. <laughs> 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 and then just by breath control, you can stay just above the sand yeah. without touching anything. Now, this technique is perfect if you have, if you want to make pictures. Like we put uh, already a lot of time in um, uh, a lot of uh, episodes about photography, and there will be one about videography as well. So yeah. that will be very nice. And this breathing technique, if you are uh, somebody that likes to make pictures or likes to make a video underwater, controlling your dive using breath control only is absolutely um, uh, perfect, actually. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you are overweighted, it doesn't work. So you have to have the perfect amount of weight with you. Yeah. A yeah. uh, question from Graham about Talasa 9, by the way. Has anything taken up residence there yet? Um, a little bit. It's a little bit disappointing, I have to say, Graham. Um, there, there's a school of bedfish, residence bedfish. Yeah. They are there all the time, and uh, they like to play around with ropes that are uh, hanging around there. There is a little bit of coral, the, the coral that we planted there. And um, one of the reasons could be that we had some very, very heavy weather with, uh, with big waves, very bad visibility, a lot of sand. There's a lot of uh, sand and debris uh, on, the, on, the, on the ship. So there is not a lot of growth there yet. But yeah, there's some fish here and there, some very cute goby uh, uh, somewhere uh, on the side mm -hmm. in a small pipe. Yep. That, that's very cute. Um, School of bed fish and uh, a couple of butterfly fish and um, and lionfish, but not so much coral or uh, sponge growth yet. A little bit of cover cover sponges, but not much yet. I spotted an anemone on it. An anemone. An anemone. Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, on the 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 forward starboard side, where okay. normally the you will have the drinking water and the tea and coffee. Yeah. There was an anemone and there was a tiny crab around it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's for next time. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So by the time you guys uh, are able to get here, you can see for yourself. Absolutely. And uh, you say also the clearing show is very nice. Uh, you mean equalizing? I think right. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Let's uh, take a look at the next clip. So here, using breath control, I want to show you that um, although, of course, this is our house reef and this was not a particularly uh, beautiful area, but you can come really, really, really close. If you want to make macro pictures, you can 
look at something very, from very, very close by. And then um, if you want to hang perfectly still, do it on an exhalation. And it's, um, <laughs> we miss you too, Mario. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when you want to get away, just inhale and quickly exhale. Yep. And you can, don't move your feet. That's what I try to tell you. Don't move your feet. Just be patient. Your body needs time to respond on the change in volume. Yep. Pointers. Yep. And as um, the for the, for everybody that has been diving with us, uh, you know that our guides they uh, they love using pointers. Um, they use it to point things out uh, in general. Um, then. The pointers are not uh, meant to uh, make satay out of something, <laughs> but it's also very useful if you want to hang really, really still and you're not very good yet with your brain C to, uh, to, to do this without help. So you can put your point on a barren piece of rock, then make sure you don't put it accidentally in a sponge or in a portal because you will damage it. Um, here, this is, a, this is a dead piece of rock. And these, what I try to do is, these are cleaner shrimps and uh, they can give you uh, a manicure, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you just keep, this is on uh, Talasa rock, right? Yes, yeah. just, just in the front. Just keep your hand out close to the shrimp and then they will come over and then you can feel them nipping yes. in the skin of yeah. your hand. It's quite yeah. funny. But I think I just washed my hands because they were not really uh, interested. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't have to move. You can do everything really, really, really slowly. Then push off. Push off. Yeah. Easy. And uh, from the push off, we have another shot. Yeah? yeah. Pointer, push and turn. Yeah. So if you use your pointer and you have done it properly on a, on a, on a piece of rock, or in this case, one of the the concrete blocks of the artificial reef you bend your arm and then you push and take your time and when you have pushed yourself away you can turn around and they are, you don't um yeah you don't damage anything yeah yeah uh steven says that cleaner shrimp can also clean your mouth if you are good at holding breath yeah i thought that would not be a good example, Stephen, but yes, yeah, you could do that too. <laughs> Stephen is full of, full of uh, good ideas. <laughs> and it's a very expensive manicure. Yeah, but still fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, uh, you, you showed me uh, years ago when we were diving on the house reef, Simon, uh, how these uh, cleaner shrimp are approaching you. And, uh, yeah. It was, uh, it's one of those little moments in, uh, you know, I won't forget that very quickly. You you reached out with your hand, and then they they just they, they jump on your they, hand they and they over. start swimming around. Yeah, yeah. I thought, so. I, there, there was something uh, slightly magical about that. I, I don't know how to explain it, but that mm -hmm. was that's what it was for me. Um, then one one eighty turns. Yeah, sometimes you just want to go back, and uh, <laughs> with all this equipment, you are bulky and and it's, it's not easy to turn. So. Um, I wanted to show a 180 degrees turn. Mm -hmm. And what you do actually is curl up because then you don't have that length and you can just swim back. Yeah. And you use your hands to make the initial turn? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that was just. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, this is finally the good bit uh, where we just. Uh, combine uh, all the techniques and uh, um, basically we just uh, enjoyed the rest of the air in our tanks yep. and uh, the rest of the dives. I did a little filming, Simone did a little diving, we both did a little diving and uh, yeah we just uh, wanted to uh, show you how you can uh, combine everything that uh, that we showed you here into a dive and to make it very comfortable for yourself so next time you can get into the water you know maybe you can uh, try some of these techniques here. And if you need help, uh, I'm there. Yeah, send us yeah. an email. <laughs> so let's take a look. 
Um, so here we are on the house reef. This looks very nice. Very beautiful weather we had here as well. Yep. Um, and this is very shallow, guys. This is only two meters deep. Yeah. But. Um, oh yeah. Here you want to point out. I think it's a lionfish. Yeah. It was very close to the bottom, and mm -hmm. I want to point out that. Using breath control. Using breath control, you can come really, really, really close if you want to make a picture of the eye of the lionfish. This yeah. is the way to do it. Yeah. So you see the lionfish right there in the bottom. And they are not very quickly intimidated by anyone. Nope. But I'm not being intimidated by him. No, I mean they they're always they always sit very still. And, uh, Lionfish, I think, um, present very good photo photo photographing opportunities. Yeah, especially for the things. Yeah. And then you just ascend again. Then uh, here I'm turning off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and then our artificial reef, the yeah. house reef. Yeah, it starts to recover a little bit. It uh, it will take time. And funny thing is that uh, when the artificial reef just was was absolutely gorgeous and beautiful with a lot of table corals and uh, um, I really enjoyed that. But then we had this big storm coming over it and even yep. the, the concrete blocks were smashed out of the, the, the whole structure and a lot of the corals they broke, they are spread out everywhere. So we put some of the blocks back uh, in place, but yeah, of course you can still see that it's severely damaged. Mm -hmm. the, the nice thing is that there's different kind of corals now growing on the blocks. It's more the um, the brain corals, the younger younger brain corals, and um, and other more massive corals. It's not the, not the um, Acropora. It's not the table corals. But it's the slower growing corals that you see now developing on the uh, on the concrete. Yeah. So it's interesting to see. Yeah, Katrin, thank you. Sorry, I have to go. But, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you when you uh, manage to catch us later when we are offline, uh, yeah. If you don't want to miss the rest, feel free to do so. So uh, yeah, let's just continue with the rest of our lovely dive. Look at these colors. It's absolutely perfect conditions. Yeah. Without light, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look at that. That's hovering. Yeah, that's how to do it. That's how you do it. Very little energy. Oh yeah, and and this is also. Uh, I thought this was funny. <laughs> uh, I didn't catch it the first time around, so that's why Simona asked you to do it again to do it properly. So can you just describe for everyone? What's happening? Well, this is this is not comfortable. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to hang up and uh, upside down for a very long time. But sometimes it's very useful, especially if you realize that baby sharks, for instance, they like to swim around under huge table corals. And very often around the table corals, there is no space to get down uh, enough to, to see them or make a picture or movie of them. So going upside down, even when your camera is upside down, you can correct that later. It's a, it's a great way of actually making a movie or a picture of something that you don't see every day. Yeah, yeah? something that is hiding under the table corals. Or, yeah. yeah. And uh, be sure to watch our stream of our dive at Banka because that's yeah. exactly what you did there under a table yeah. coral. Yeah. Those uh, 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 black or white, black, black tip, tip. white tip reef sharks yeah. under there, those mm -hmm. juveniles. And uh, you were hanging upside down there with your GoPro, uh, minding your own business, and you completely <laughs> forgot about everyone else. <laughs> I, that's usually the yeah. case when I have the camera in my hands. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a way to, uh, to, uh, to capture them yeah. on video or photo. So yeah, great stuff. And here you're demonstrating how you can use your breath control to uh, photograph or videograph something. Yep. And um, a uh, uh, slight tip of the, uh, how do you say that? 
tip of the watch. I, I want to announce something that uh, okay. <laughs> both Peter Learning as well as Paul have uh, agreed to do uh, a presentation on underwater videography. And we don't know yet exactly when, yeah. but... Um, we will do that. We yeah. will do that. Yeah. So we're very happy that they want to do that. Yeah. So. so again here, nicely in control. We're pointing out... Uh, a moving sea star. A moving sea star. Um, and that's the way to do it, right? Leave nothing but bub bubbles. Don't even leave footprints. Yep. If you can help it. And then a nice uh, big breath in. And then you continue with the rest. Yep. And then it was time to go back. Yeah. So. The back. last shots from, uh, the, from the house reef and back to the jetty. Then there's a post dive buoyancy, buoyancy check. Yep. That's the last thing you want to do. Yes. Um, so, um, yesterday, uh, last week, when I told you that uh, the best idea is to do a buoyancy check twice. One time at the beginning of your dive where you estimate the amount of weight, and the second one is at the end of the dive when your tank is nearly empty. And you see, this time my fins are still. Uh, I wave my hands a little bit because of the balance. I have to stay in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And when I exhale, I am still sinking very, very slowly. So I have exactly the right amount of weight. Yeah. And I, I think it's fair to say you had a little bit more than 50 bar left in your tank. Yes, yeah, actually, right. that's why you had to use a graphic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why. So, uh, yeah, that concludes our uh, presentation, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. Jose says, so good to see you again. Good to see you too, Thank Jose. You. Thank you, Jose. We can't wait to see all of you again. Yeah, November mm -hmm. would be very nice, uh, but yeah. we have to see how it goes. But we, we'll keep to have, we'll, yeah. we'll keep the, watching everything day by day. Yeah. Um, no, it's always it will be open. I, I think we can safely say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but it's just the international borders have to open as well. Also, and the flights has to be, have to yeah. be available. Yeah. Uh, Stephen mm -hmm. is asking now, what when there's a current? Stephen, Stephen, if you would have looked at the stream from last week, then you know what to do in the current. So my suggestion is to look at that on YouTube or on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Albert, we love the show. Yeah, we love you guys back. And thanks again for um, the donation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. For sure. And uh, Graham is uh, loving us and leaving us until next time. Thank you very much. Keep well and stay safe. You too, Graham. Take care. Um, yeah, that about fills up our uh, show yeah. uh, for yeah. this week. Uh, I hope you liked it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have to keep reinventing uh, ourselves to uh, keep doing this every week. Uh, I think by now you've gathered that uh, nothing much will stop us to uh, broadcast to you every Saturday. And we continue to do so. And we have a couple of nice things uh, in the planning already. Yeah, we have subjects coming up. And uh, thanks a lot for your suggestions last week. If you still have any suggestions of any subject that you want us to cover, uh, do let us know. Uh, keep asking yeah. us. And uh, that way we can keep inspiring each other to give you something special. Yes. Every week. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, Alice, too late. She's, uh, she's going to wa watch the rewind. Please do. Fortunately, that's possible. Yes. Yeah. And um, thank you, everyone, Thanks, for Philip. coming out. I hope you loved it. Yes. Thanks, Vaughn. Good show. Nice practice presentation. That's always nice to know. Um, Matthew, uh, I think that is not uh, completely true. Um, there are There is a serious talk between Singapore and Australia to open up the flights. And they plan to do that in June, July. So there, there is, there are things opening up. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, for those who missed it at the uh, beginning of the show, uh, we had some positive news in the EU. 
uh, that the plan uh, seems to be working out. But yeah, again, you don't know. It seems to be working out that around 70% of all EU inhabitants will be vaccinated by the end of July. So fingers crossed for that. Yes. Um, so yeah. Um, well, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a beautiful weekend and uh, wish you beautiful weather and you can go out and you can still and you can actually have a beer on the terrace. That's now. happening in uh, many places in Europe. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so good for you. Right. OK, everyone. We'll see you next week. See you next week, guys. And thank you very much for watching. Yes. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.